In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the Lord be with you. Brothers and sisters, as we prepare to celebrate these sacred mysteries, let us acknowledge our sins. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Grant us, Lord our God, that we may honor you with all our mind and love everyone in truth of heart. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever.
The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Jesus and his disciples came to the other side of the sea, to the territory of the Gerasenes. When he got off, when he got out of the boat, at once a man from the tombs who had an unclean spirit met him. The man had been dwelling among the tombs, and no one could restrain him any longer, even with a chain. In fact, he had frequently been bound with shackles and chains, but the chains had been pulled apart by him, and the shackles smashed, and no one was strong enough to subdue him. Night and day among the tombs and on the hillsides, he was always crying out and bruising himself with stones. Catching sight of Jesus from a distance, he ran up and prostrated himself before him, crying out in a loud voice, What have you to do with me, Jesus, Son of the Most High God? I adjure you by God, do not torment me. He had been saying to him, Unclean spirit, come out of him. He asked him, What is your name? He replied, Legion is my name. There are many of us. And he pleaded earnestly with him not to drive them away from that territory. Now a large herd of swine was feeding there on the hillside. And they pleaded with him, Send us into the swine, let us enter them. And he let them. And the unclean spirits came out and entered the swine. The herd of about two thousand rushed down a steep bank into the sea where they were drowned. The swine herds ran away and reported the incident in town and throughout the countryside. And people came out to see what had happened. As they approached Jesus, they caught sight of the man who had been possessed by legion, sitting there, clothed and in his right mind, and they were seized with fear. Those who witnessed the incident explained to them what had happened to the possessed man and to the swine. Then they began to beg him to leave their district. As he was getting into the boat, the man who had been possessed pleaded to remain with him, but Jesus would not permit him, but told him instead, Go home to your family and announce to them all that the Lord in his pity has done for you. Then the man went off and began to proclaim the Decapolis what Jesus had done for him, and all were amazed. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. The Catechism of the Catholic Church. Let your heart take comfort all who hope in the Lord. That's the sound that we just recited together. So I chose to see what the Catechism had to say about hope. Right? Because sometimes we feel like, well, you know, we're hopeful people and we always hope for the, in the Lord that everything will turn out right and that somehow all our problems will disappear. And as we know, that doesn't always happen like that. Right? So, so what is this meaning of hope? The Catechism says, through hope, which is a grace, we have the desire for the kingdom of heaven and eternal life as our happiness. Through hope, we desire heaven and eternal life for our happiness. That is, no matter what's going on around us. In that first reading, we have the, the, uh, an account of many martyrs and the tribulations that they went through. And through all those tribulations, of course, they maintain their hope not believing necessarily that they would survive these tribulations or that everything would be okay, but that ultimately they would achieve eternal life. This is a section of the Catechism that talks about hope for some time and they word it in a way which I could not word any better, so I just want to read it. The virtue of hope responds to the aspiration to happiness which God has placed in the heart of every man. It takes up the hopes that inspire men's activities and purifies them so as to order them to the kingdom of heaven. It keeps man from discouragement. It sustains him during times of abandonment. It opens up his heart in expectation of eternal beatitude. Buoyed up by hope, he is preserved from selfishness and led to the happiness that flows from charity. The parts of that that really struck me were two. The hopes that inspire men's activities are purified so as to order them to the kingdom of heaven. Listen, imbued with hope, 
you with hope. What we truly hope for, of course, is eternal salvation and union with God. And that influences everything that we do. And so our hopes are not necessarily just for great wealth or, or, or renown in this world. But our hopes are to be Christians, are to unite with God. And the second, related to this, buoyed up by hope, he is preserved from selfishness and led to the happiness that flows from charity. Which is kind of counter to the worldly idea of hope. We hope for all kinds of good things for ourselves. But Christian hope is something different. Yes, we hope for union with God, which is good for ourselves, but ultimately what we hope for is to be good disciples of Christ and to glorify God with our lives. And that's the true hope of Christ. fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people. He stretched out his hands as he endured his passion, so as to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection. And so with the angels and all the saints we declare your glory, as with one voice we acclaim. 
Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread, and giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory. The mystery of faith. Save us, Savior of the world, for by your cross and resurrection you have set us free. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and John, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you all. Lamb of God. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am now worthy that you should enter into my roof, but only say the word in my soul.
Let us pray. Nourished by these redeeming gifts, we pray, O Lord, that through this help to eternal salvation, true faith may ever increase. Through Christ, O Lord. Amen. So the uh, appointment for the COVID vaccine was snapped up like that. They went very, very quickly last night. As per the, uh, the phone message and the email, you have to have registered online via the link, which was uh, emailed out and also put on the website. If you have not, I'm talking also to people who may be watching this mass at home, if you have not registered on the link beforehand, uh, please don't come for the appointment. They will not give you a vaccine. Also, you must also bring proof to show that you are part of whatever group that you, you uh, that qualifies, over 65 or a teacher or whatever that group is. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. The question was just asked if we are doing the blessing of the throats on Wednesday. At the 8 o'clock in the noon mass, there will be a blessing of the throats. Okay, so at the 8 in the noon mass, there will be a blessing of the throats, but we are not to touch you with the candles. All right, but there still will be a blessing of the throats at those two masses, no other services for the blessing of the throats.